What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get system info for your apps with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get system information from your computer to your Kinter apps. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, runtime fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. And going up soon, check the video from yesterday to see all about that. Okay, pretty simple video today. In this video, I just want to show you how to get your system information from your computer into your Kinter apps. All kinds of reasons why you might need to check system information in any app you're building. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it very quickly and very easily. So you can see we've got our system. It's Windows. I'm on a Windows computer. My username is Codemy. The release is Windows 10, I guess. The version is 10.0.1.9.0.43, whatever, butchered that. The machine I'm running is an AMD 64 with the processor AMD 64 family 23 model 113 stepping zero authentic AMD. And you could also find, you know, the version of Python that you're running if you're interested in that. I'll show you how to do all of that in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with over 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got some basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. I'm calling this sys.py, short for system.py. And this is actually really, really easy. We just need to import something called platform. Now this comes with Python. We don't have to pip install this or anything at all. We can just use this. And this gives us platform information about your computer or system information about your computer. So before we get into this, let me just head over to our web browser and show you the documentation for this because you might want to take a look at this. It's just, it's just at docs.python.org forward slash three library platform.html. And like I said, this comes with Python. We don't have to install this. And this is the stuff that we can use. We can call any of these things to get any of these things. So if you want to know the processor, you just call platform.processor. If you want to know the Python build that you're running, Python underscore build, or better yet, Python underscore version, that'll give you just the version number without a bunch of other gobbledygook that you don't need. Uh, and just all kinds of stuff here. So I'm on a Windows computer. You can also, you know, get Windows information, but you can also get Mac information as well. So I'm not going to go over the Mac stuff in this video because I'm not on a Mac at the moment. But if you are, you could just sort of come here and read through that. Uh, same thing with Unix and Linux as well. So, all right, let's play around with this a little bit. I'm going to create a label. I'm going to call it my label. And that's going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal. I'm just going to create a variable called info. And let's make this font a little bit bigger as we usually do. So let's make this Helvetica and like, I don't know, 14 or something like that to make it a little bit bigger. And that's my underscore label dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 20, just to push down the screen a little bit. So, okay, that's our label. Now let's create this info variable. And I'm going to set it equal to this. And we're going to have a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to put this on multiple lines. It's going to look sloppy, but yeah. We don't really care about the kinterness of this. This is more a Python thing anyway. So I'll just show you how to do this really quickly. So also let's make this an F string so that we can do other stuff inside of here. So first let's find the system. And for the system, that's just going to be platform dot system, right? And this is a function. Now I'm going to put these on multiple lines. So I'll use the backslash n, which stands for new line. And this other slash will allow us to do multiple lines in our program. You see, we got these big, ugly purple bars. Those will disappear in just a second. So next, let's get the username. And let me just come through here and we want the release. We want the version. We also want the machine type. We want the processor just for fun. And let's get the Python version as well. There we go. And username, that's just going to be platform. Dot. Let me just copy this because they're all going to be platform dot somethings, right? So actually, we also want a slash in and a slash. So let me copy all of this, make this a little bit faster. Just bang in all of these here. There we go. No more big, ugly purple bars. So here, this is going to be platform dot node. And you know, this is a username. So what is the node? Well, that's just what the system calls the logged in username on a Windows computer. That's the node, right? So platform dot node, and these are all functions. 
So the next one is release. So that's just platform.release, also a function. And platform.version, also a function. Platform. You'll never guess machine. Yes. And here, this is platform. Processor. And finally, platform. Python underscore version. And that's it. That's all there is to this. So we've created a variable. We've put all this stuff in them. Put each one on its own line. And then we're just going to take this info variable and slap it into this label as we've done thousands of times in this playlist. Go ahead and save this. Let's head back over to our terminal and let's run python sys.py. And when we do, boom, we get system windows, username codemy, release 10, version 10.0 point whatever. The machine, I'm using an AMD 64 processor. The actual processor is AMD 64 family 23 model 113 stepping zero authentic AMD. I don't know. I built this computer years ago. I don't even remember. I remember I definitely used an AMD processor, but I don't know what the rest of the stuff is. It doesn't really matter. And the Python version that we're using is 3.9.5. I know there's a Python 3.10 out now. I haven't updated yet. I usually wait a little while to update those types of things. I did a video on updating versions for Django last week. If you want to watch that to learn my philosophy on updating to the newest, latest, greatest version of things, you can watch that video. I have very specific uh, ideas about that. I always wait a little bit till the next version gets the kinks worked out of it. But anyway, that's besides the point. And that's all there is to it. So normally you're not just going to want to print this stuff to a screen. You're going to want to do something with it. You know, you might check to see if a person's computer is the right, you know, has the right processing power. You know, if it's a 64 bit version versus a 32 bit version, if you come back over here, you can look up. There's one for windows. Where did it go? Right here. You can see whether or not this will return a Boolean, true or false, if it's a Windows 32 version or not. So if you want to check to see if a person has a 64-bit machine or a 32-bit machine, you could use that for that. All kinds of cool stuff, 32 edition. And you can come through here and play around with some of this stuff if you're interested. There's not a whole lot here. We went through most of it, you know, a lot of the big things here. But uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. The platform, cross-platform, platform library, I guess. And uh, comes with Python, nothing else to install. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.